Some believe, some believe that this second beast that comes out will be almost like a world religious figure, like a, a great pope, but a more globalized kind of figure like that. And it says, and he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of two men. And so there'll be signs and wonders that will come through this person. And because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. So it's believed that the Antichrist will be killed somehow, and then he will be resurrected. Again, just like Jesus, right? And he was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so it's very possible to, for the Antichrist to be able to do this, a one world government and a one world currency would have to be set up of all the banks globally working together to set up this mark of the beast in that you will not be able to buy or sell anything unless you have this mark. So when you hear these kind of things, the question is, how should we respond? What should be our reaction to this? Jesus, at the end of Mark 13, he gives a couple parables. I'm going to do the first one in verse 28. He says, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as his twigs get tender and its leaves come out, like what we're seeing happening now in springtime, you know the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So this is the attitude that, that I think biblically we need to embrace is to watch for the signs. And when you see the, the limbs on the fig tree begin to get soft and you see the buds, you know that summer is coming. And so as we hear these things going on globally in the world, is it possible that the twig is starting to show its buds? Is it possible that it's right around the corner? Is it, is it possible that in our generation, the Antichrist will rise to power and we will see Christ return? It's very possible. I remember when Jane was pregnant with our oldest son, Wade, never had kids before. And you go to this crazy thing called Lamaze class. How many guys had to go to Lamaze class? You know, most guys, they don't want to go. But their wife makes them, right? It's, it's, the, it's the godly thing to do with your wife. And so I remember we're going, we're learning how to breathe, and I'm learning how to help Jane relax. And then they flip in this video, and they're showing a woman having a baby. I mean, it's like graphic right on the screen. And I'm thinking, put that thing in reverse. <laughs> Send it back in. That's the goriest thing I've ever seen. But the one thing they talked about is when to know you're close to going into labor. They talked about false labor, and they talked about what real labor is like. And so we, uh, what do you do when you have your first child? You, you get ready, don't you? At least you should. I mean, Jane did. And, and so she, she decorates Wade's room, and, and we get the crib in there, and, and she's got all the diapers all stacked up neatly, and, and she's got all the baby wipes, and, and then she has this bag. You know, they tell you to take a bag, and they tell you what to put in the bag so that when you go into labor, you can just pick up that bag and go. And so when Jane finally started going into labor, she knew she was in labor. There was no doubt about it because we were educated. Well, she was educated. And she knew 
that it was time. And so that, that is a picture of how we should respond to this kind of news, is get your house in order. It's important. I'm going to have the worship team come up. It's important that we understand that it needs to get a lot worse before it's going to get way better. But don't lose faith. The warning that Jesus is giving is many will lose the faith during this time. Many will fall away because we will not be able to withstand persecution. And I think Americans are probably the softest Christians in the world. And when persecution hits worldwide, Americans will probably run in the droves from the gospel, from Jesus. But I hope that we are not in that group. Back in uh, Mark 13, verse 13, he says, All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. I want all of us to stand firm to the end. I want all of us to be able to look Jesus in the eye. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. And one of the things, as you hear this kind of message, if you don't know if your house is in order, if you don't know what your relationship with God really is right now, I'm giving you an invitation right now to just say, Jesus, I need you in my life. In hearing this kind of stuff, it's time for me not to wait anymore. And so I'm going to have the ministry team folks come forward. And they're going to be standing up here during this last song. And if there's something and your heart's pounding, and, and it, what it is is the Spirit of God is drawing you to them. And, and it, it's time for you to come forward and just say, God, I just need to make things right with you. I need to get my house in order. If this is the times that the scriptures talk about, I need to be ready by getting my heart right with you, by confessing your sins and asking Christ into your life and receiving the grace and the forgiveness that he has for you. And so the other thing that I want to encourage all of us is the one thing when you hear this kind of stuff is, is the enemy would love to put fear in us because fear paralyzes us. But the one thing that God promises to us is the power of his Holy Spirit. In Acts 1, verse 7, Jesus talked about him going away, but he would be coming back. And they asked him, when, when is this going to happen? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God wants us to get our hearts right, to get our house in order, and he wants us to have a sense of urgency to go into the world and proclaim his kingdom to those he loves. And so let's stand. And as we're worshiping this last song, if you would like, if you have fear in you right now, come forward and ask for these guys to pray for you that the power of the Holy Spirit would give you boldness during this time to the end. All right? So if you want to get your house right with God, come forward. If you want boldness to overcome fear and to be God's witness in the world, come forward so these guys can pray for you. So ministry team, come forward and let's worship Jesus who's coming back, friends.
You know, if you really think about the things I've talked about, instead of it being fearful, it actually is quite exciting. And we quite possibly, friends, could be living in the most exciting times in the history of mankind. It's very possible that we will start seeing unfold before us some world events. And after hearing a teaching like this, you will go, there it is. That's it. That's the point. That's what we want to do. You know, the one thing, I was talking to Seth, the children's pastor, before uh, the service. He, he was all sunburned. And I said, well, you've been out sun, bro. And he goes, I was watching my son's football game. And he said, last week they lost 40 to nothing. But they did better this week because they only lost 36 to 7. I've been on a lot of teams on the bottom end of that. But the one thing when you hear the good news is we are on the winning team. But we have to remain faithful. And we have to, we have to hang in there. And we need the power of the Spirit to give us the, the impetus and the strength and the courage to keep going when it seems like all is lost. Now, our intercessors said as they were praying before the service, they had a, a, a feeling that uh, there possibly is, is some gentlemen here that your business is really struggling and you're like in this dark pit and it seems like there's no getting out. And I think maybe there's a message for you in this too, that God is your deliverer. And, and so... If you are one of those guys, come forward and have these folks pray for you for God to deliver you out of that. All right? So God bless you guys. And thanks for those of you that have helped with ShareFest. And be sure and, and stop out in the lobby and, and meet the Hubers and start racking your brain of who you can send to Japan. All right? God bless you guys. Have a great weekend.